Good morning, Facebook. How you guys doing? I got nothing to say. Well, I have a lot to say, but I don't have anything funny to say. I do. I, well, actually, I do have something funny to say. I was watching the race this morning. It may not be funny, but I was watching the race, and uh, Luke had a bunch. My son had a bunch of his buddies over last night, and uh, we ordered some breakfast tacos. So we're sitting around watching the tour this morning, and uh, one of them's like half is half Italian, half. American. Luke's still asleep, so it's two of his buddies. And so the one the Italian kid sitting there, he's like, Oh, Mr. Armstrong, what bike race is this? I'm like, what kind of fucking question is that? What do you mean what bike race is this? Like like who? I said, it's the Tour de France. He's like, Oh, really? These kids, these kids these days. Even a European kid. Could he name another bike race? Well, he probably the tour tour of Italy, yeah. and he's you know the cazzo, the cazzo. He starts speaking in Italian. I mean, you should know. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> JB, how you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic. Yeah, Are you kidding me? That's because you didn't have to climb that hill in Rodez. That's right. That was brutal. Yeah, that was nasty. Wait, wait. We're, we're gonna, gonna get into that. Yeah, we're gonna. We're gonna um, Please hold. Another town we can't pronounce. Blagnac. Blagnac. Okay. Let's do it. All right. Welcome back to the Stages Podcast. I'm Lance Armstrong. I'm my co-host, Jeffrey Benedict Hager. We're going to talk about a day that I didn't really think that we would have too much to say when it comes to the overall uh, race, but ended up being very eventful. Blagnac to Rodez. Yeah. Were you just shaking your head today watching a Rue go out of yellow? Just literally shaking your head? Like, how do you let that happen? Well, it was supposed to be uneventful. Yep. And as, as far as the general classification goes, for it sure. should have been uneventful. No, I mean, well, a couple things. I want to just. Full disclaimer, I listened to yesterday's podcast, and as I was I was driving home, I went and played golf, I mean gambled, I mean played golf in the afternoon um, with some buddies, and uh, drove home and I was listening to it. I was, was I in a bad mood yesterday? I was very persnickety. I, I don't know. I was just like, I was thinking to myself, this guy's got to say something nice. Okay, so, so I'm going to something nice. I'm going to be very nice today. All right. But, and, but I'm going to be not, well... I'm going to start by admitting that I was not very nice. But if your objectivity warrants being a little cranky, yeah. so be it. Well, Does that make sense? Yeah. Can you turn me up? I can't even hear myself. Thank you. Uh, no, so I, and at the same while I'm being nice, I have to apologize for the people that did take it to Vegas, take that bet to Vegas. I, I, I had, in wrongfully so. I mean, Michael Matthews would have been a, a, a great pick for, for today. Uh, Greg Van Aramont, as well as Philippe Gilbert, who was, I mean, those three guys, classic style riders, you know, guys that, that are going to win a Tour of Flanders or, or a Roubaix or even a Liège were the perfect pick. Um, overall, the, the way this unfolded, we were right about. I mean, uh, um, Team BMC and Sunweb, for that matter, controlled the race. Team Astana had to do nothing. It was Christmas. And yet, somehow it went, it just went wrong. And, and we were talking about it before. A day like this, on paper, you think, okay, the yellow jersey doesn't change hands. This doesn't change the outcome of the tour. These guys that lost time, like Aru and, and, and some of the other GC guys, could have lost the the entire Tour de France today on 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 this uphill finish, and it's it's really inexpl what's the word inexplicable. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the what's weird is we need to describe what happened because I, I'm shocked by the number of people who are listening to this podcast daily or you know catching it on Facebook yep. and have not seen the stage. Yep. So yesterday you called it. You said, "Watch for time splits. Watch for time splits." You, you, you're familiar with this finish, oh. and that's what happened. Aru was in yellow. He 
needed to stay in front. There was a time gap. And when there's a split at the finish, the clock starts ticking. So he lost 24 seconds yep. today. Now he's 18 seconds back from right. front. In, in a bike race where it seems like 18 seconds is going to matter, uh, of course, we we definitely have hard stages to come, and, and but the, time, the final time trial is not long. Um, this is a classic team day where you just a finish like that all, all you have to do if you're in the yellow jersey you don't get dropped on that hill and mm -hmm. this is this is a and, and we spoke about it yesterday i mean this is i did this hill two two years ago i mean i went up it slow but if you're in the mayo jaune the yellow jersey you don't you don't lose time on that hill all you got to do is start at the front and it wasn't it was a, it was a tough day i think we saw a peloton that is actually starting to look tired um, their overall uh, uh, speed today was was slower than the slowest projected time, which is an indication. You had to obviously had the breakaway go like every day, um, but you know all Aru had to do is is just get with his team, start in the front, mark his guys. Uh, I mean, it's 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 kind of it's it, I'm baffled. I mean, I, I don't think it's an issue of the legs. I think it's just. Where is the team? And we we talked about yeah, he has no team. He has no team. He, he has no but support. But yet he had the, the the you know the all the Christmas gifts under the tree all day long, mm -hmm. and then to see there's something going on there. And um, I spoke to George Hincapie yesterday, and he he asked me he said, Do, should we have Vino on the podcast? Should we have him call in Alexander Vinokrov, who's the GM of Team Astana, mm -hmm. an old rival of mine. And uh, as, as, as George says, the head mafia boss, should we have him on? I said, sure. Mm -hmm. So Vino agrees to come on the podcast. So we're going to have him on. We can ask him. Okay. What is going on with this team? They interview uh, Fabio Aru's Danish teammate. I forget the kid's name at the finish. And he says, well, oh, did we lose the jersey? And the guy goes, yeah, Froome has the jersey. <laughs> and the kid goes, oh, good. Like, like was that their strategy? Like... <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Heads up, hats off. I mean, Chris Froome rode a great race. He he clearly has a, a, a team. I said it yesterday. I mean, they, they know who the boss is. Um, and so he, he he was in the in the perfect position, didn't uh, didn't lose any time. But actually technically he lost a second, but that you know, that's neither here nor there. He put time into his rivals. So he rode a smart race. Okay, so we all know that you know, even though even though um Aru is down some teammates. Doesn't have the clearly doesn't have the strongest team. Try to try to paint a picture for us. Like, if you say he has three guys who can support him, how hard really was it for them to stay in the front? Not hard. Okay, we watched. That's the, the burning question. Right. Well, you, it, That's it your was, job. Right? This is a day where, and and even today is is those sprinter teams stay out of the way. I mean, Kittle's dropped. You know, gripe. They know that, so it's not this fight, right? It's right. always a fight to get to the front at, at, a, at, a, at a for the finish. A day like this, there was less of a fight because you know people knew who was who was going to be there and who wasn't going to be there. Watching on on the television, you know, this was to have three or four guys just bring you to the front and protect you and just drive it home. And they kept calling it out, saying, "Look, he's you know." And I kept thinking, "Well, surely he's going to move up." I don't know. I, I, I'm at a loss. I'm at a loss. He didn't seem too bothered at the finish. They interviewed him, and I don't know. Maybe they got a lot of tricks up the sleeve, but I, I just don't think you give away 20-something seconds. By the way, too, I mean, look at all the guys. Everybody, Quintana loses time. Contador loses. I mean, the, the George, I mean, the, it... This is gonna this is gonna be kind of a, a, a rookie thing, but I, I think a lot of uh, people watching the tour don't understand this. Some people get the same time why there was a split, how that happened. That's so kind of, that's, kind of break that down because it is confusing. It's a great question, people. and that's changed over the years how they decide uh, what is a split in the group, right? And so in the old days, you know, you had to, you know, the as the peloton stretches out as it does at every finish you know there was in the old days there was a there was a, an actual distance between riders and then they would count time and now 
and I should know this and I don't, um, now they use time. So it's either one or three seconds. So if there's a gap, if you're one second from the next rider in front of you, you get the same time as him. And if, that, if every rider was one second, one second, one second, one second, they'd all be the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm getting this right. Um, but now th they actually count it. And so, you know, it can be, I mean, it can be a headache for the officials, uh, but it can also mean, it, it can be very meaningful. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what, and we, what saw we saw today. That's yeah. what we saw today, exactly. Okay, and, and shed some light on this too, because I, I don't really have clarity on when there are time bonuses for the top finishers. I mean, does that vary? From... That, that changes every year. Why? <laughs> because it's cycling. <laughs> And it makes no sense. <laughs> wait, wait, I'm a, I was going to be nice today. Um, no, it's, it's, listen, it's up to the organizer. And by the way, every race has time bonuses, almost every race. And so it, it, it changes every year. You know, there, there are years where the time bonuses are bigger. There are years where the time bonuses are only for the sprint finishes. And then there are years where there are t actual time bonuses in the middle of the race for the intermediate mm -hmm. sprints. So, you know, for this year, uh, except for the time trials, there's time bonuses every day, 10, Maybe, 6, is, and 4. Is that just, um, is that just the, the organizers trying to change up tactics every year? Because sometimes there's a team time trial, sometimes not. You, you, I mean, think about it. I mean, I, I, I talked about this at the beginning of the tour. If Alejandro Valverde is in this race, which he's not, uh, he's thinking about those time bonuses. He, he's looking at, at the at the you know the profile or the uh, the course map and thinking I got thirty seconds of bonuses. He knows that thirty this race thirty seconds is a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I still think and it didn't matter what I think or, or, or because it didn't happen. But he he would have been a a, a real factor in this race because uh, I think he was riding good. Quintana not, and um, with the time bonuses so. And the time bonuses vary too. One might give you ten seconds. One might give you twenty. For they don't, they're not consistent with that either. For first, second. No, I mean there are other years where there's more. There twenty seconds for the for a stage mm -hmm. win. So that can. It's up to them to just look. We talked about ASO yesterday. The organizer, the owner of the tour, they designed this. The, the, when I was sitting with my my uh, sons uh, buddies this morning, and <clears throat> before we went live on the podcast, I said it on on. Uh, Facebook, but uh, one of the kids is like, what bike race is this? I'm like, are you shitting me? <laughs> it's the Tour de France. <laughs> oh, really, Mr. Armstrong? But uh, one of the kids and the other kid, uh, Stephen said, do they change the route every year? And I mean, it's a great question. It, so this route, it, I mean, there has never been two tours that are the same. Right, so it's yeah. It, it, they changed the direction of the tour, but they rode this finish two years ago. There's the, there are the finishes that they repeat. There's the classic finishes that they try to do every couple of years, whether it's Alpe d'Huez or Mont Ventoux. Obviously, it always finishes in Paris, but th that run into Paris is always different. You finish with ten or so laps on the Champs Elysees, um, but no, it's it's uh, it's up to them to decide the route to decide the time bonuses, to decide, you know, it's their event, and that gets announced, uh, for the person who doesn't know, that gets announced in October, so that, and it's really a closely held secret, I mean, it, it gets out, leaks out a couple of days before, but that's a big, you know, that day in October when the route is announced, you know, all these guys that are trying to win yellow, mm -hmm. that's a big day for them, because they're trying to figure out what they gotta do. This might be a dumb question, but are all the messages that are written on the road in chalk the same every year? Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, the penises and the syringes, all the shit that, yeah, that's pretty much the same. Do they, do they put wieners on the road? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all right, we got an email about that, Hicks? question said, why do they put penises on the road? Do so they really? see that, look at that, huh? That, do they really? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen that. I haven't been there. Buddy, every, everybody wants a little TV time, not just Thomas Vogler. <laughs> I mean, you, you, draw, you draw a big old, big old um, stiffy, I mean, you're going to get on TV. <laughs> That's like clocks in the field and Dude, the, clock, and the and clock thing. Rainers on the road. The clock thing. <laughs> I mean, it's almost worse than listening to Yen's voice. 
the clocks. Uh, no, 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 no. I was going to be nice today. I was going to be nice today. Oh. Very, very probably. Does a, a writer even, obviously not, t today was a little dramatic and quick finish, even though it was on the steeper climbs. Yep. Do the writers even see what's written on the road? Uh, it's, you know, when you're on, you know, we, we pay attention to that because they, the helicopter shot, you have, you know, the ultimate view. But no, on, on the, you know, yeah, yeah, I guess you can see it. I always remember seeing, you know, it would say like, you know, Armstrong and have an arrow, like a right turn that just took you right into like the parking <laughs> lot. Like, I'm like, oh wait, is this the way I go? <laughs> Uh, you know you're not that popular when they tell you to turn into the parking lot. Okay, what's Froom thinking right now? He's, he's, like, he's thanks for the gift, dude. This is uh, he's um, he's feel I don't know, I'm not changing my he. This is his bike race to lose. He's he's riding heads up. Uh, big day for him. A, a day that he, I'm sure last night and this morning he expected to not. Be in the jersey, and that Aru would ride a, a, a professional race and be up there. Um, he's he's happy to be back in the yellow jersey. Mm -hmm. There are, for the record, there are four riders within thirty seconds going right. into yeah. stage fourteen. It, it makes it, you know, I, uh, it's a peculiar route. I'm sure that uh, when Chris Froome saw this route last October, he didn't like it. But boy, as a, as a viewer, a spectator, a fan, this is. Pretty exciting. Cool. Pretty let's, exciting. let's talk about tomorrow, and we've got some good questions and comments. We're today. already talking about tomorrow. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I agree. So tomorrow, these guys are all—you guys are all mad at me because I didn't come over here and watch the bike race with you. I was—I was—I uh, slept in a little bit, and I uh, watched at the house. Man, I'm sorry. You guys call me a bad teammate when I got here today. <laughs> I didn't say that. Higgs did. did. you get it? Higgs, oh, come on, man. What's up? We were just kind of wondering if you were going to show. You should, you know what? That would be a good thing. You should just do one by yourself one day. You just talk to yourself. No. Bolch, Bolch will ask you some questions. Is it, were you a little freaked out that, that one of your fans, uh, you know, found the Airstream studio in Aspen and took a yeah. picture on Instagram? I know you're... What did I say her name was? Celine? You lost those seven pounds in the first week. And all the chicks are coming and looking for you. Take pictures of your... <laughs> Seven pounds is, is barely a dent in this, this frame. Yeah, someone found the Airstream in Aspen and took a picture of it. Says, we found it. <laughs> funny. You thought, you thought the bears were uh, found. That's funny. And if you didn't hear it the other day, the, uh, the three Belgian guys that found it yeah. and found you, that was, that was pretty classic. It was. A few guys riding from California... To New York. To New York with 80 pound loaded bikes mm -hmm. and took a diversion through Aspen just to see if they could find Lance. Pretty cool. Very cool. They were very happy when you handed them a beer. All right. Let's tomorrow. Talk, yeah. Tomorrow's going to be interesting. Yeah, it is. And it, it, it's got, you know, it's, uh, I think the things that stand out to me are, it, it, it's a very difficult day. And it's going to be very difficult for those at the back of the peloton, and the, and the sprinters who uh, have to make the time cut. The, you know, these days, and we haven't really elaborated on this, but you can get eliminated from the Tour de France if you don't stay within a certain time of the of the win. That can happen tomorrow because there's a category one. You have a category very early. You right? have a category one climb very early on. Um, like how early? How many kilometers? I mean, it starts at mile ten. You have a nine, you know, a, a, a six mile climb at six and a half percent. So it's, it's, you know, for guys like Marcel Kittle, who was dropped today on a, on a, on a bumpy, rolly, uh, you know, hilly day, uh, it's, 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 it's something he has to think about. Then you have a category one climb at the end. So if you're, if you're distanced, you have to somehow stay close enough. And then, you know, but I do think tomorrow, finally, a breakaway goes away. And, from the guy. And, well, or when it, and stays away. I, I think this is the classic day where uh, now Team Sky uh, can can just select who goes. In the, mm -hmm. That's really what happens. I mean, they say, okay, you can go, you can go. Not that they go tell guys, but <laughs> right. but they but they guys will be allowed to they, go to the front. They curate that group, yeah. and and if it's anybody within you know whatever twenty minutes, they, they don't let them in the group. But but also too, those guys that want to get in the move. 
they know that they can, and, and if they look around and see somebody that's seven minutes down, they don't want them there. They try to get rid of them. They, you could even tell them, hey, you've got to get out of here because this is not, we have no chance of succeeding if you're here. Um, Does that help Sky if there's a, complete, a standing breakaway? That's one hundred, completely How so? Explain. It completely neutralizes the race. Nobody's going for bonuses. Nobody's, and, and the finish is, the intensity, if there's a group of five guys or 10 guys, or it could be 20 guys that succeed and get to the finish, I mean, the intensity in the peloton for the finish is 10%. I mean, there's no incentive to take risks, to take chances. There's no time bonuses. There's no uh, green jersey points. It's, it's, it, I know I said it yesterday, take it to Vegas. I got almost all of it right. I didn't get the winner right. Hats off to Michael Matthews, but there's a break going tomorrow and it's gonna stay to the finish and you can take that to Vegas. Okay. That's why they keep building casinos. That's why casinos make money. That's why they keep building this shit. Because fools like me. <laughs> well, with the remainder of the stage, I know there's that big category one climb early. Does the re remainder of that stage present an opportunity for any of these guys and GC wise? Yeah. No. No. Not gonna there, happen. There's no well, I mean I didn't think there was any today. Any uh mm -hmm. any carnage in the G C landscape today, but there was. I um Wow, well Um That was a ambulance fire truck. Uh what I said the other day at, at Melo Johnny's is, is still holds so this it, we are getting deeper and deeper into the Massif Central, which is the center of France. The roads are rough, they're never flat. It, as you saw today, it can be windy, it's exposed, it can be hot. You know, days like that, you, you have to pay attention, but they just, net net, is they're just not easy days. Even if... There's no such thing as it, easy day. Well, they're getting, these days are tough. The Massif Central is famous for that. You wanna tackle some questions and comments? It depends. You ready? Depends. He's punchy today. This is going to be good. No. I, I was punchy yesterday. I'm trying to be really nice today. <laughs> I am. Am I being nicer? Yeah, you're all right. All right. Here's one from Davis. On a long mountain stage when the team rider is done well before teammates, like an hour or more sometimes, is there a drive to the hotel or does the leader have to wait for everybody to get to the hotel as a group? That's a good question. It is a good question. I personally speaking, I, I never waited. I always had a car uh, waiting waiting for me, and just you know, the quicker I could get out of there, get back to the hotel, get some food, get massage, get you know, get the recovery process started, the better. Uh, you know, if you're in the yellow jersey, then you know, even if a teammate's thirty minutes behind, he's out of there before you because you've got doping control, you've got the podium protocol, you've got interviews, you've got all of these things. And so then you're ultimately the last person to get back. That's there. There is stress associated with having the jersey because there's just, you know, there's all this stuff you have to do. Like tonight, Fabio Ruiz he doesn't have anything to do. He's just going to leave. Chris Froome, who thought he, you know thought he was going to get home early, is now stand. He's still standing there. He's got to do uh, press, and then if you're in yellow, you get tested. Uh, yes. Okay. And probably you probably get tested if you. Started the day in yellow. That's, That's interesting. Yeah. So I never thought about that because that that delays your time for relax, recovery, nutrition. And, everything and, gets moved back. And if you're dehydrated and you can't go to the bathroom, you have to wait. You have to just sit there and drink and wait. To I mean, it, it can be hours. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. It's it's not stress. It's not a hassle free to have the jersey. It's great and it's it's um, it's what you want. But it 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 adds. A couple hours to your day. Do they still give out those teddy bear lions? I don't see that. You anymore. know, I don't know. I haven't seen that. That's a good question. <laughs> we don't know. The I answer. have. You know, that is something that should be on this shelf. Why is it not on my shelf here? Wait. My kids. My kids took them all. They're like, no, you're not getting this. Another one. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Uh, hey, Lance and JB. This is from Matt in Seattle. Said loving the podcast. I know uh, Lance has been known to enjoy his Lanceritas. Uh oh. And I was wondering if some guys on the tour can indulge in a beer or two after a stage. I've found that some of my best races have been after a slight amount of carbo loading, if you know what I mean. I know what you mean. Uh, um, probably not. I don't think there's any... Um, I, don't, I don't... Only before maybe the Champs-Élysées? 
when it's done. The night, you know, the night before Paris, you, you, the boys definitely let their hair down, but um, not worth no, it. That's not worth it. I don't think there's any at this level. I mean, I think you know, obviously, a, a glass of wine is not going to hurt you, but th- these guys are all too, you know, they're, they're too disciplined to to do that. Now, there has been people that certainly uh, did, mm-hmm. but. No, Chris Froome's not having a sip of alcohol till Paris. Yeah, I think we've all seen the the vintage tour pictures where they've got Cigarettes. wine, beer, and s- yeah. smokes hanging out. Oh, those were the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, hello, this is from uh, let's see, Sue. Hello, uh, Lance and JB. Just wanted to know that someone in Kazakhstan is enjoying the podcast. Interesting. The Kazakhs are crazy, but the people in my small town are great. They've taken good care of their local American for the past three years. An American in Kazakhstan? Well, Sue is her name. She's obviously not Kazakh. Right. Speaking of the Kazakhs, uh, well, thank you, Sue, but uh, somebody uh, somebody sent me a tweet yesterday where they had, uh, and this is just ironic because Fabio Aru races for a Kazakh team, they had this side-by-side photo of, of uh, Borat and Aru, and I mean, it... And then somebody then <laughs> followed does. up, followed up, and put the mustache on a root in the in the green bikini. It is a spinning <laughs> image, and the fact that he rides for a team from Kazakhstan is like, I don't know how they haven't worked with that. Like had him grow a mustache, and it, wow, crazy. John Nelson writes, uh, Bob Key claims the tour is an all-around test, but there's no off-road stages, gravel stages, track stages. What do you think about that? Well, that's... Uh, I, I can see both. So obviously, and there never will be. You're never going to have... Uh, well, never say never, but you're never going to have a, a day where there's there's a single track section on the mountain bike or, or uh, an enduro section downhill. You're not... This is... It's a, it's a test... It, it is a total test of a road cyclist skills in the sense that there's sprints, there's mountains, there's time trials, there's technical aspects. So it's a true test like that. But, uh, you know, there is no gravel. However, there are years where there's cobblestones. And that's not something we saw this year. Um, but there are a lot of people that feel that since the most iconic and famous one-day race in the world is Perry Roubaix, which is in France, and is a is a essentially a, a, a cobbled classic, there are the the, the hardcore uh, old school cycling fan would insist that the Tour de France should always have a, a day of cobbles, and when that happens, all bets are off. It, it makes that race. Completely. Especially if it's wet, right? If it's wet or windy, it, it anything can happen. We didn't see it this year, but the years they do it, I mean, a guy like a Rue or a Froome or a Bardet who weigh 120 or 130 pounds over the cobbles, I mean, it is complete mayhem. And I, I don't, I mean, as a as a rider, you hate it. You know, you don't want, you don't look forward to that day. You don't want to. You don't want to preview that day, even unless your name is Hinkathy, you might enjoy it. Or or Ekimov, or you know, or th- those guys. It's their day to shine. But the downside is so big for the GC guys, the overall contenders. Yeah. I'm going to bring up something from a couple days ago that there were so many comments on. Very passively, you said, and Roger points this out. Roger Thompson. He said, "Famous words. I am not a perfectionist." <laughs> you said that the other day, and a lot of people commented on it. Yeah. Yeah. What was I Do you want to address that? I know. I was, sometimes <laughs> I say things I don't mean. That's what people I, called you out on that. I, they, and they should. So are you, you would describe yourself as a perfectionist? No, I'm not a perfectionist. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Listen, some, you, you, this is three weeks. We're doing this for three weeks. Yeah. And sometimes you just got to make shit up. I mean, it just... <laughs> it's not easy. You sit at home watching on Facebook or listening on iTunes or SoundCloud or, or YouTube. It's just, it's not easy, JB. Yeah. The struggle's real, bro. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is funny. Sean writes, Lance, what's with the uh, Vitell boy band looking guys dressed in white pants that mob the stage winner right after they cross the line? The winner must be so annoyed to be so, getting pawed by these guys. Totally annoying. I mean, completely annoying. The interesting thing, though, is 
is, and, and I mentioned this yesterday, ASO and their sponsors, they'll whore out anything. So the, what I noticed yesterday, a lot of these guys, when they finish, they're so tired, they fall down, they lay on the ground, and those Vitell guys with their, the same jumpsuit are there. So they've got the, if they just wore white pants, you wouldn't see the logo. They've got the logo all the way down That's, to the ankle. So when these guys are laying on the ground and crawling around and tired and, and, and or whatever they're doing, you see the logo. Oh, you see the pants. Yeah. And it's, and it's very well placed. They, they have it figured out. They have, but you, to his point, it's annoying. Like when you, but the whole scene, I've never understood why at the finish, there's so many people there. Like, what are you all doing here? Get out. And you're not talking about behind the barriers. You mean literally cross the line and everyone's pawning you. You know, the journalists are there, sponsors are there. Obviously, your swanier is there with water and a towel and, and whatever you need. But just how that's not more uh, locked down and sanitized, I don't. And by the way, the tour is is the ultimate, I mean, it's the place where it's the most locked down. If you go to the Tour of Italy or Tour of Spain, I mean, the corner, you know, uh, butcher is standing there. Like, it's just, it's complete mayhem. And it's, it is, and you see a lot of days where guys are like, they're, they're literally fighting for space. Give me space. Get away. You know, it's, it, I, I say it all, I mean, I use that word a lot, but uh, it's totally janky. Especially when you, you've either sprinted your life out or hit a summit, and you're probably pretty blurry-eyed and about to fall over as it is. And you're and you're just that's the last thing you want is to be is to be sort of um, suffocated. Yeah, it feels like that, but yeah. And this one's a little more for the people watching on Facebook, uh, but you can do your best to describe it for the podcast listeners. But Sue writes another Sue, another Sue from Kazakhstan or a different one. <laughs> Sue McCutcheon. Hmm. Uh, would love to see the artwork behind JB. What is that? They caught a glimpse of it. So this is a uh, for the for the longtime fan or uh, even anybody that remotely pays attention. So I, I'm I love art. I collect. It's kind of my closet uh, hobby. I collect a lot of art. But this is a James John piece. John being uh, J E A N, great young artist. Uh, this piece is, is actually a horse and a bicycle colliding, ironically. It's called Collision. Um, it's the only piece of his that I have. But uh, I don't know. I just thought when we built this studio, I had to, in the office, which is out front, it, it, it was just a great place to hang some art. Cool. James John. And uh, one more? One more. One more. Uh, one more. I'm going to add a, a, a part two to this, but uh, Johnny Sheehan writes, what is, what is your best memory from the Tour de France? I'm going to add, what was your worst memory, too? Um, boy, that's a great question. Um, you know, honestly, and I, I spoke about this a few days ago. I mean, when, when Jan Ulrich came to the, uh, it's not a sporting memory, but it's a personal memory. When he showed up, in 2005 to the final celebration in Paris and, and asked asked to come and then asked to talk. It was, it, you can't top that. For your main rival, after all those years, to, to have the class to show up and, and say a few words nice about you, you know, that's the best personal memory. Sporting-wise, I mean, there's just too many. I mean, yeah. the, the first day in yellow sticks out. Alpe d'Huez 2001 sticks out. Um, 2004, winning number six sticks out. So it, 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 there's a lot of professional and sporting memories. And as far as the worst memory, um, 2003 was a tough year for the folks who watched uh, those years. It was it was the closest year. It was it, ironically, it was the year that people had probably enjoyed the most because mm -hmm. it was close. I hated it because it was close. <laughs> um, that time trial. Um, that first time trial was was so difficult. It was the only time in, in those seven years where I literally wanted to get off my bike. I said, and and Johan Brunel in his spidey sense knew it. He said over the radio, he said just he said he saw that I was struggling. In some sort of a weird cosmic way, we were so connected. He knew that I wanted to get off my bike. He gets on the radio and says, "Do not stop pedaling," because I was thinking. I'm about to stop pedaling. Really? It was that bad. I don't... Every warning light on the dashboard was going off. <laughs> it was hotter than hell. 
And I just I wanted to get off my bike. Wow. Yeah. I thought your worst, I was predicting your worst memory would be uh, before you were sick when you had to withdraw. I think we all remember that scene where like it was pouring rain and they were peeling off your numbers. Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah. You were sick but didn't know it at the time. I was sick, that and, right? I, I was sick and I didn't know it. Um, and it was diagnosed. Gosh. When the Olympics right after the, the, the So we went to our Olympics and then was diagnosed shortly thereafter. But no, that, that doesn't, no, that, that they definitely sucked. Um, but, you know, little did I know I was, I had no business being there in the first place. Very cool. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. If you want to send your questions, comments, send them to stages at we do sport. Dot com W E D U. Someone asked why it's not W E D O Y W E D U. Do you want to address that real quick? I'm guessing because it was taken. I don't because it's cooler. <laughs> it's just W E D U is cooler. <laughs> and uh, if you want to send a link to share the podcast, get your friends to subscribe. Stagespodcast.com. Go to we do shop.com to get some of the merch. I know a lot of people <laughs> want the suffer shirts. Yep. I think we should do on the Suffer shirt, I, 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 I'm surprised that one did so well, and, and I'm, again, I'm sorry that everything's, that really, there's nothing available there. We're going to replenish that store yeah. soon, once we get off our lazy asses. Um, but I, I, I propose doing, just tweaking the, the Suffer shirt a little bit. I like the gray and the white, but I, I think a little, maybe navy with some white, or changing the colors up a little bit might be, might be cool. Some vomit stains on the shirt, really suffering. Ew. You, you you can have you can do that one. You get all the proceeds from that one, JB. I, <laughs> that won't sell. I don't want nothing to do with that. <laughs> Go to wedosport.com too. If if you want to get on the list, so you know when that merch gets replenished, you yep. can just drop an email there. That way, you'll get notified right away. Yep. Because it's pretty limited run. I'm yes. Guessing. All right. All right, buddy. Thank you. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in.